This is the Garmin Instinct 2, a watch I initially thought would not be for me, but over time it proved me wrong, at least for the most part. In this video, I'll scientifically test the Instinct 2 from a health tracking perspective. I'll first show you the things it was good at, then I'll move on to the things it was mediocre at, and I'll close off with the things it did not do so well. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob, and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. In this video, we'll test the heart rate monitoring, GPS tracking, oxygen saturation measurements, and sleep tracking of the Garmin Instinct 2. We'll also compare it to many of the other Garmin models that were recently released. First, let me share the most important background information on this watch. In my hand, I hold the normal Instinct 2 without the solar charging. If you get the version with solar charging lenses, these will be able to harvest solar energy and extend the battery life. I've ran all other aspects, both versions have exactly the same design and health features and should give exactly the same results in all my testing. When it comes to the battery, I found the battery life to be pretty good on the standard model already. After charging it to 100% capacity, I've been using the Instinct 2 for about a week now and in that time I wore it all day and all night and I used it for about 7 hours of GPS track exercises plus 3 hours of non-GPS track workouts and the watch currently still holds about half its charge. The reason the battery lasts this long is largely because of the very low powered monochrome display it uses. This display is not a touch screen so all functionalities need to be accessed using these 5 buttons. However I have not found this to be an issue and the interface is similar to most of the other new Garmin watches I have tested over the last few weeks. The sensor on the back is also similar to the one used in other high end Garmin watches like the Epix 2 and Phoenix 7 series, which means that at least theoretically it should be better than the one used in the Garmin VivoMove Sport for instance, which uses the previous generation of sensor. However, on this channel we like to put the theories to the test, let's start by looking at the features that performed best in my testing and close off with the things the watch did poorly at. The thing I like most about this watch is its heart rate tracking. I'll show you the results during spinning, cycling and weightlifting. To do that, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Instinct 2 against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. We'll start by looking at the easiest type of exercise for a watch to track, cycling indoors. Now this involves very little movement or tension on my arms and will therefore produce less noise. Here we see an overview of that accuracy. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Instinct 2. Now the darker black the color the more dots there are. Now the blue line indicates perfect agreement. And as you can see there's a pretty good agreement between the ECG chest strap and the Instinct 2 as most points are along the blue line. However there are still some points away from the blue line both above it and below it indicating it detected both a too low and too high heart rate. That is because it sometimes showed a slight delay in picking up decreases in my heart rate. Here you can see my first interval spinning session with along the horizontal axis the time and my heart rate along the vertical axis. In blue I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the Instinct 2. As you can see the two lines overlap mostly very well, however there are two moments where my heart rate decreased and the Instinct 2 showed a clear delay in picking this up as you can see right here and right here. We see mostly the same thing for this second ride, with mostly a very good agreement, however there are some moments where it showed a bit of a delay. Finally we see the same thing for this spinning workout right here, where for the first break it failed to pick up on my decrease in heart rate. However let's put this into perspective by comparing it against some of the more recently released Garmin watches. Here we have the same overview plot from before on the left and the results for the $900 Garmin Epix 2 on the right. These two watches have similar sensors and we also see they have roughly the same results, however the Epix 2 is of course more than double the price. We also see mostly the same results for the Phoenix 7 on the right here, which is not surprising given its similarity to the Epix 2. And also for the Garmin Venue 2 Plus with similar sensors, we again see most of the points are along the blue line. Only the Garmin VivoMove Sport, which is much cheaper and has the previous generation sensors, appears to perform ever so slightly worse, though definitely still not bad and still good overall. So all these watches appear to be good enough at tracking my indoor cycling exercises. It's much harder for watches to track my heart rate accurately while I'm cycling outside, because while cycling outside there's much more movement and bumpiness and also much more tension on my wrist, making it harder for a watch to accurately detect my heart rate. 
However, looking at the overview of that accuracy, the watch still performs quite well. As we can see, most points are still along the blue line and only a few measurements are away from it. This indicates that the watch mostly agreed with the ECG chest strap. If we look at the individual rides, we indeed see that the red line of the Instinct 2 follows along quite well with the blue line of the ECG chest strap. For this second ride displayed here, this is even better with almost no deviation between the chest strap and the watch. As we can see in this third ride, the largest deviations occur when there are sudden dips in my heart rate. As you can see, for instance, right here, but also right here and right here. And we can see the same thing during this ride with almost a perfect agreement, except for the few dips in my heart rate, as you can see right here, right here, but also a few right here. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the heart rate tracking during cycling. It mostly agrees well with an ECG chest strap. If we compare the overall results to the Epix 2 I tested two weeks ago, for instance, so that's displayed right here with the Instinct 2 on the left and the Epix 2 on the right, we see that the Instinct 2 definitely showed better results in these tests. It might actually be the lower weight of the Instinct 2 and a different shape of the watch band that make it more secure on my wrist and therefore provide better results. Finally, during weightlifting, the Instinct 2 did less well, but this is true for almost all of the watches I've tested so far. Here you can see one example weightlifting session. Now weightlifting is the most difficult for watches given the tension on my wrist and arms. And indeed we see a familiar pattern. The Instinct 2 can detect my heart rate in between sets, but the moment I start a set, it cannot always keep up with the peak in my heart rate. It's still able to capture the peak sometimes as we can see right here. However, it quite often misses the peaks as we can see right here which we can see even more clearly during this second weightlifting session where it could only really follow one peak, but it missed most of them. So the heart rate tracking of the Instinct 2 is quite good. I would say it does quite well during indoor and outdoor cycling. And like almost any other watch, it does struggle with weightlifting. Still, it definitely seems to be amongst the better watches out there. If I'd had to rate the heart rate tracking, I'd give it four out of five stars, given that it's very good, though not the best watch I've tested so far. Now, before moving to the next test, if this video is proving interesting for you, my instincts are telling me that a sub to the channel would be amazing. The next thing the watch was quite good at is GPS tracking. I tracked my ride during seven bike rides while I was cycling to and from work. And I wanted to test two things. One, how long does it take for the watch to get a GPS signal? And two, how well the GPS signals overlap when cycling the same route multiple times. That is displayed here for four times I cycled back from work. I started the activity the moment I was ready to leave and I did not provide the watch with any extra time to acquire the signal. The green markers indicate those moments it connected the GPS signal. And as you can see, it acquired the signals almost instantly, which is good. It needs a few seconds to get a more accurate location, but it quickly locks on. And once it has the signal, they overlap quite well in general, as you can see here, for instance, and sometimes very good, as you can see right here, for instance. However, there are some moments with a bit more deviation, and one example of that is right here. You can see that the signals disperse quite a bit, but generally I would say they overlap quite well. Of course, this is just a qualitative comparison, but if I compare it for instance to the Epix 2 and Phoenix 7, it seems to be deviating its signals ever so slightly more, though that might be just by chance. Looking at cycling to work, we see mostly the same thing. The signals are acquired quickly and the signals overlap quite well for the most part, though there is some deviation as we can see here, for instance, but sometimes they agree almost perfectly as you can see right here, for instance, and also right here, it's quite good. Though here again, there's a bit more deviation. So the performance is potentially less good than that of Garmin's top models, the Epix 2 and Phoenix 7. Overall, I'd also give the GPS tracking of the Instinct 2 4 out of 5 stars, since it acquires the signal quite quickly and is pretty consistent, though some other watches appear to be slightly better. So these were the two best performing features of the Instinct 2 in my testing. One other feature it was okay at, though potentially not great, is the oxygen saturation or SpO2 measurements. Over the last week, I measured my oxygen saturation at ground level in the morning and evening using the Instinct 2. At the same time, I also recorded my oxygen saturation using a dedicated finger pulse oximeter. Whereas my heart rate is generally measured with green light, red and infrared light are used to measure oxygen saturation. At ground level, my oxygen saturation should be within my normal range, which which is generally between 97 and 100 percent and should not fall below roughly 95 percent. Here I displayed the results of the test. On the left are 24 measurements taken with the Instinct 2 and on the right matching measurements taken with the finger pulse oximeter. 
As you can see, the Instinct 2 is generally within a normal range of SpO2 values. However, it does detect relatively low values compared to the finger pulse oximeter. However, to be sure of the accuracy of the Instinct 2, I'd have to test the oxygen saturation measurements in a low oxygen environment at some point. Still, as far as I can judge, the SpO2 measurements taken by the Instinct 2 are in a realistic range, though on the low end. So I'd give the SpO2 measurements 3 out of 5 stars. Now the thing I found the Instinct 2 to be worse at, and this might not come as a surprise, is the sleep stage tracking. Like most new Garmin watches, the Instinct 2 has advanced sleep stage monitoring, which tracks your sleep stages, oxygen saturation of the blood and your breathing rate. To check if the Instinct 2 can detect my sleep stages, I'll compare it to an EEG device called the Dream 2 headband that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be relatively reliable at sleep stage tracking. And here I show an overview of those sleep test results. For getting an overall impression of how well the Instinct 2 performs, the Dream 2 headband should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which I'd also like to try on the Instinct 2 in the future. Now on top are the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device, on the left the sleep stages as recorded by the Instinct 2. I wore both the EEG device and the Instinct 2 to bed for 5 nights and I'll see how close the predictions of the Instinct 2 are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 was predicted as each sleep stage by the Instinct 2. If they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. First of all, we see that only 39% of what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was also deep sleep according to the Instinct 2. Most of what the EEG device identified as being deep sleep was actually detected by the Instinct 2 as light sleep. Now this is not very good and it actually gets a bit worse. For 2 out of 5 nights, the Instinct 2 detected no deep sleep at all, and one example night is displayed right here. On top we have the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 EEG headband, with the clock time on the horizontal axis and the sleep stages on the vertical axis. On the bottom is a similar plot, but now for the Instinct 2. I've highlighted all the EEG recorded deep sleep in purple here. As you can see, the Instinct 2 did not detect any of this deep sleep, or any deep sleep at all for that matter. We see the same thing for this second example night right here, where no deep sleep at all was detected by the Instinct 2. Now the deep sleep detection does not appear to be very good, but the light sleep detection appears to be okay-ish. Light sleep agreed with the EEG device at about 57%. If they did disagree, this was mostly by the Instinct 2 predicting REM sleep. REM sleep also did not agree very well between the EEG device and the Instinct 2. Only 35% of what the EEG device marked as REM sleep was also marked as REM sleep by the Instinct 2. A larger percentage was actually classified as light sleep by the Instinct 2. Take this example night for instance. In red are marked the REM sleep as recorded with the EEG device. And as you can see, there's only a marginal agreement at best between both devices. You go through roughly four to six sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light sleep and deep sleep, which is marked here in blue, and each one ending in REM sleep, marked here in red. As you can see, I likely had four complete sleep cycles this night, though one could argue I had five. And because the REM sleep detection by the Instinct 2 does not seem great, I would judge that we cannot see the sleep cycles based on just the data from the Instinct 2. Awake detection did show a relatively high agreement with the EEG device at over 80%. If the Instinct 2 did classify awake time as something else than the EEG device, this was mostly as light sleep. Which makes sense given that light sleep is the closest sleep stage to being awake. As you can see marked here in green, the awakening I had was indeed also detected by the Instinct 2, but a lot of extra awake moments were also detected. We see mostly the same thing for this night right here. The one clear awake moment I had was also detected by the Instinct 2, but it did judge it to last longer and it also detected some extra awake moments. So this does not bode well for the Instinct 2 when it comes to sleep stage tracking. However, it is good to put these results into perspective. This graph shows an overview of the the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. The better the agreement the more to the top right the device is and as you can see the best agreeing devices include different Fitbits, in this case the Fitbit Sense Inspire 2 and Charge 5, the Whoop Strap 3.0, 4.0 and the Withing Sleep Analyzer. As you can also see, the Garmin Phoenix 7, Epix 2, Venue 2 and Venue 2 Plus do not show a high level of agreement. However, the Garmin VivoMove Sport does quite well, as you can see up here. This is the only Garmin device I've tested so far that does quite well at sleep tracking. 
if we now plot the Garmin Instinct 2 in the same plot, we see that it is quite close to the test results I got for my second round of testing of the Phoenix 7. Both have an average agreement over the four stages of about 55%. Now this is still not very good compared to some of the better devices out there, which are closer to 70 or 75%. Now based on these results, I would say that the sleep stage tracking of the Instinct 2 is not very good and generally very similar to many of the other Garmin devices I recently tested. The main thing I would use it for is tracking my total time in bed since it does seem to be quite okay at detecting the moment you fall asleep and the moment you wake up. Therefore overall I'd give the sleep tracking of the Instinct 2 2 out of 5 stars. Initially I did not think I'd like the Garmin Instinct too much. Taking it out of the box it somehow felt somewhat cheap and I did not like the look. After having used it for a while the watch grew on me and I actually started to like the way it looked and I quite enjoyed using it. I also really appreciate the great battery life and the fact that I did not have to think much about charging it. Based on my experience so far, overall I'd give the watch 3.5 stars. It has pretty good heart rate tracking and GPS tracking, whereas the main thing it does not do so well is sleep stage tracking. So if you care about heart rate tracking, it seems to be a solid choice. Speaking of heart rate, I'm currently testing the Huawei Watch GT Runner, which is very similar to the Huawei Watch GT3, which had amazing heart rate tracking. Check out that video right here. The Apple Watch is still the undefeated heart rate king. If you want to see more, you can find those videos right here. I'll also link the recent reviews I did on other Garmin watches right here. Now I hope this video provided you with some value. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.